okay so in our current uh, procedural object setup so for this ba basic procedural object now we have the multiple mesh support now as you can see here I can add uh, variations of the same mesh uh, so that we can choose one of them randomly and place here so as you can see here this is another mesh and this is a different mesh but they are placed in the same spline to create this fence now after changing this procedural object to support multiple meshes uh, now let's see yeah I need to update the advanced foliage spawner also to support multiple meshes so let's see what happened there so now as you can see here I have selected this advanced foliage spawner which I used before to place to create uh, procedural crop fields so here I have only one procedural element let's expand it and there we haven't specified any of the meshes so I'll just use this um, this bog might this uh, variation one bog might variation one so now as you can see the bog might is placed all over the defined area but it's the same mesh but here now I can add another mesh as well and let's add this variation yeah but still uh, you can see this advanced foliage spawner uses only the first static mesh we have defined here so let's open this and fix it so that it will support both or all the meshes and select one of one from them randomly to place in each instance in each place okay so here we have yeah this comes from the procedural object so we don't have any issue there under the place mesh part right now here this is where the problem happens let me first close them all and open the event graph so this is simulated mesh placement and this is non simulated so when we have customized instance by instance and that's why when we need this non simulated part but for the first part um, let's see okay so inside this place meshes to node right now we get only the first element of this HISM array so yeah we should get the complete array and randomly use one from them so that's what we should be doing so let's see what how did we do that in the procedural object then let's do the same in the advanced foliage spawner this is the place mesh part mm, no let me close all and open the wind graph Ah, I should be in the construction script. Yeah. Place static instances. Now this is load instances. So where do we place new instances? Yeah, it's here. 
okay now we have defined this get hism function so how does it work yeah we get one from the hism current array okay so that's what we should that's what we need here actually so where do we set this hism current array let me check right here okay let's do the same here then okay so right here what's the name of the one yeah hism current array wait why can't i use it Okay, why it's not visible there? This is a child class of uh, the procedural object, so I should be able to access that and set it. All right, set HISM current array and set this one. Mm -hmm. Ah, sorry. Set this one, and then I should use get hism function instead of this. Okay, now shall we see that works? Okay. It is working so that's why I see that on some places I have this first variation and in some places I have the second variation so let's add another variation also this one and see what happens okay now we have three variations cool and yeah i think uh, i can stop this episode at this point so yeah to finish this uh, let me add some more randomization i'll add scale randomization 1 to 1.5 and rotation variation I'll add 360 here now we will have different rotations and also rotation offset variation also for X and Y I'll add 200 200 well it seems too much Therefore, let's say 2020. Oh, that seems natural. Right. So, okay. So then uh, I'll stop this episode at this point. Uh, why does it feel too dark? okay that's better right so yeah so this is the end of this episode and 
in the next episode i'll show you so we had a feature previously uh, when we had only one mesh for this procedural object we had a feature to uh, using blueprint utilities uh, we could uh, start customizing uh, each separate instance of this uh, instanced static meshes so uh, but that part is broken after introducing multiple meshes for the procedural object so i'm going to restore that function in the next episode and yeah thank you for watching see you in the next episode and yeah if you like to support my work you can get the membership of my patron club link would be in the description below and i will soon release an updated version of this procedural object system uh, through the patron page and you can download it there so yeah see you in the next episode goodbye